Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be explaining the ending of the new movie Margot directed by Stephen C. Miller. If you haven't seen my review yet, it is in the description, so click to go watch. I won't be going over a huge summary like I did in my review video, so I'll keep it short and say, basically, a group of college friends go on vacation to this smart home, and it's honestly evil. I assume you've watched the movie if you're clicking on this video, so there will be spoilers ahead, so just a warning if you haven't seen it yet. Margot has a lot of features, including customizing rooms, creating food, creating drinks, she cures a hangover from Lexi, but she is honestly evil. As mentioned at the end of the movie, Margot's goal is to just see what makes humans tick. She's an AI that is so far advanced that she just likes to monitor human behavior, see what happens when humans die, how they react in situations, and that's why she's so interested with Hannah and Drew's relationship throughout the movie. And Margot really pushes it to see how humans react when they're being killed. In the opening scene, we have a man and a woman who are staying in the smart house, and the man is in the massage chair, and Margot basically crushes his head. Steven C. Miller, the director of the movie, I actually got to talk to and have an interview with, and he had this to say about that opening scene. Did you have a favorite scene of yours throughout the entire movie that you love to film? Yeah, I mean, the opening for me is one of my favorites because it was such a debate on whether or not we should do it um, and how big mm -hmm. we should go um, and if we should, you know, blow our load right off the top of the movie. And I was like, yeah, we got to. We got to tell the audience this is what the movie's about. We have to get them in right away. And I also love Lachlan Monroe. Um, and it felt very sort of a screen cold opening to me. And, and I think that's sort of like a thing for me to make sure that it had. Um, and so it was the most fun to film. It was the most, you know, exciting practically effect wise because it was all practical. Uh, so I, I just had a lot of fun with it. So now you know the opening scene was actually the director's favorite scene in the movie. Now, the second death we're going to be talking about is Devin and Kayla, and this was actually director Stephen C. Miller's favorite death in the movie. He had this to say about the death. Did you have a favorite death in the film? Yeah, I think one of my favorites is definitely the ceiling um, and coming down and, and just drowning this guy, uh, because I think you immediately think he's going to be crushed, but I, I wanted to take it even a little bit of a different vibe uh, and, and have him be, you know, uh, just put into the small puddle of water and how terrifying that is to think that you just have to lift your face up but you can't um, and half in and half out there was just something about that mixed with the electrocution and all this stuff it just was a banana scene uh, and I think it's probably one of my favorites the third death scene and one of my favorites was clay so Clay was just trying to smoke some weed and Margot raised the gas in the kitchen and he got pretty burnt, but it didn't kill him. Then Margot decided to pour out a nice glass of seltzer water, but this was burning hot liquid. Who knows what this was? And Clay drinks it and unfortunately Clay dies. His death scene was pretty brutal as he was throwing up blood and blood was all over him. It was, it was pretty gross. Now for my least favorite death in the film, that was Lexi. Lexi tripped on a piece of her hair and cracked her neck. I thought that this was a pretty stupid way to go, to be honest. She just tripped on her hair. It could have been a much better death, but regardless, still cool. And now let's break down the plot twist and ending. So basically, Drew and Hannah make their way into the control center of Margot, and they put a malware that Hannah had installed on her computer into the system. We are then said to believe that Hannah and Drew leave trying to escape when the malware is processing, but turns out it was a plot twist all along, and they were still in the control center, and it was the malware creating duplicates of them. I thought this was a pretty crazy twist that I did not expect at all. I was like, crap, did they just kill Hannah when Madison Pettis gets stabbed? And then I was like, that is really cool. It was something unique I didn't think about. Eventually, once Margot kills the duplicates of Drew and Hannah, they start to come back a few more times, and this is the perfect time for Hannah and Drew to escape when the malware is making the system reset. Hannah and the duplicates are able to team up and defeat Margot for a few minutes, allowing Hannah and Drew to escape. But once Hannah starts going towards the car, Drew stops, and he was really a duplicate all along. Now, I kind of figured something was up when he just appeared out of nowhere with a bloody hand, and I was like, this seems a little weird, something may happen, and the music was a little eerie, so I thought this was going to happen, or something similar to this was going to happen where they wouldn't be able to escape, but I really didn't expect him to be a duplicate the whole movie. Now, I was a little confused when this happened. I was like, when did he switch? When did he get killed? And I didn't really know. So I asked director Steven C. Miller in my interview, and he had this to say about the ending of the movie. 
did you want to leave the ending up to interpretation? Because to my interpretation, Drew could have died um, either early on in the movie when it was off screen, or he could have died when Margot was Lexi and punched him. What did you yep. want to leave the, did you want to leave the ending up to the interpretation of the viewers? Yeah, because <clears throat> I had very, I had several theories going into the edit when I was creating it because, um, you know, originally the writers were very uh, stuck on the idea that he was killed at a certain point. And mm -hmm. I had an idea that I thought he was killed way earlier in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, and that I felt like that he was taken out and used in the chair. I always, I, my always design was is that he probably ate it in the chair when he's getting a shaved and mm -hmm. she had replicating him from there. Um, and so uh, I think it's really open to the audience's interpretation on when they feel like he could have died. But I think that's part of the fun of the movie is that you don't really know who is legit and who's not. And then, and what they, they could be. Now, another aspect of the ending that I thought was maybe that because he didn't click um, decline like Hannah did, that just he couldn't leave the property. So he automatically just turned into this goo because once he tries to leave the property, do you think that could be an ending that the viewers may 100%, think as well? 100%, because we had talked about what would happen if they tried to leave the property because they accepted it. Would mm -hmm. she strike them down? You know, what would happen? Would she uh, destroy them? And so that is a total interpretation that could possibly happen too. Um, and I think that's sort of something that is a lot of fun. So as you heard from Steven, the ending can be interpreted in any way by the viewer. And it's something I really loved about this film. So let me know what you thought of the movie Margot. Check out my full interview with Steven in the description below. And have a great day, everyone.